Here is what you missed this morning on the Catholic Morning Show. Deacon at St. Luke, the Evangelist Catholic Church in Ankeny, here to talk about why the saints matter, the deacon doctor, Matt Hallback. Do people call you that, hey. the deacon doctor? Well, some people do. Some yeah. people do. I've got, a, I've got a blog that says the deacon doctor, yeah. but maybe those who read it. Maybe that's where it was. Uh, what, what did you get your Ph.D. in with theology? Was it just theology? Sure. So, How does that work? So within the theology umbrella, there are several disciplines, like you could do systematics, historical theology, moral theology, sacramental. Mm-hmm. Uh, mine is catechetics, which I would tuck away in the pastoral theology uh, vein of things. So my focus was on the transmission of faith, how people grow in faith. Um, so we're looking at pedagogy. We're looking at impacts, cultural impacts, you know, to growing in faith, uh, as well as just um, – uh, the history of incredible preachers and teachers in, in the Catholic tradition and being able to draw from them and, and uh, pass it on to the next generation. How much would apologetics, so the defense of the faith, play into your Ph.D.? Uh, into the studies themselves, not too much, uh, but into the practice. Uh, I'd say quite a bit. In fact, um, this coming weekend, I'm doing my fourth and final apologetics uh, workshop for our deacons here in the diocese. These these guys are already ordained, because I'm also the director of preordination to the diaconate, so the guys that are being formed for the diaconate, but these are guys that are already ordained. This is going to be on Mary and and Marian dogmas, and uh, how do we talk about those and defend those, and how do we do those with with fervor? How do we do that with fervor? But how do we also do that with compassion? And what's the role of listening? And and how does um, understanding factor in to where understanding doesn't mean uh, rel- you know relativism, but understanding does mean trying to set aside um, presumptions and really listen to somebody. I know you have shared personal stories on the saints before in your life, and and that's what we're talking about today is why the saints really matter. And you mentioned Our Lady, of course, the queen of all saints. If I I was to ask you, you know, and let's say I don't know a lot about Catholicism, but but why all these saints? Why not just Jesus? That's true, by the way. Listeners know that. (laughs) That That's very true. (laughs) What would you say? Why all these other people? Why do we care about them? Why not just Jesus? Yeah, you know, that's really, that's a great question. And actually, uh, we've kind of find an answer all the way back in the New Testament with St. Paul. Now, what's really interesting about the writings of Paul is you, you cannot find anywhere where Paul says, imitate Jesus Christ. What you do find in Paul's letters is him telling his churches to be imitators of himself, hmm. uh, to follow St. Paul. And Augustine is the first uh, patristic, the first church father to really pick up on that. And what Augustine concludes because of this is that Paul understood, you know, Jesus is God. Like, we can't imitate God as human beings. We can't be like God in in the sense of modeling and following everything he does the way he did it. Like, there's just an infinite gap between Jesus and the rest of us. Hmm. But we can follow those who have tried to follow to the best of their ability with the grace of the Holy Spirit. You know, and that begins with the saints, and St. Paul obviously is one of the first among them. And so that begin, begins really the, the theological and sort of pastoral tradition around the saints, that these are models, human models, that we can really strive to, to live up to and emulate. Um, and I, I think having those kinds of models is, is so important, again, because, I mean, let's, go, let's, let's, let's speed the clock forward from St. Paul's time to the 1990s. Do you remember the big trend that was going on where it was like wristbands and T-shirts and oh, yeah. WWJD, like oh, what yeah. would Jesus do? Right. Like that's that's that, that's such a great question to ask, and certainly Jesus is a guide and, and, and an example for us. But the the thing is, you know, can we really operate like He does and, and have the insights that He does and be in relationship with the Father the way He is? Well, the answer is no, but we can uh, sort of on a more of a just purely human level. Uh, imitate the saints who have tried to to follow a, a saintly standard, and what decisions have they made, and why have they made them, and what are the actions they've taken. And the saints, what's so great about them is not just that they're human and they're accessible, but they come from all walks of life, and some of them come from really bizarre backgrounds. And, and look at Paul. I, I keep talking about Paul. Paul was carting off Christians uh, to prison in Damascus with supervised the torture and execution of St. Stephen, who's our church's first martyr and deacon, by the way. And, you know, all of a sudden he has this conversion and, and everything's different for Paul. And now it's now he's all about Jesus. So the saints come from all walks of life. They give us so much hope because 
no saint is born a saint. Mm. Uh, they have to go through some sort of a journey. And I think that's the most attractive thing, is finding out what are the journeys of these particular men and women. Was there ever a hang-up for you? Was there ever a time in your life that you're like, I don't need Mary, I don't need the saints, I, I just, I'll stay at the course here? That's a great question. Uh, to be really honest, I think my devotion to Mary over the years uh, has kind of waxed and waned. And I'll tell you what, when I when I kind of get back to taking my prayer life and my spirituality seriously, Mary's always at the center. Mm. Um, and I find that when I am, when I'm conscious and intentional about making her the center, uh, there's a lot more fruit born of my prayer life. There's a lot more fruit born of my faith. There's a lot more um, sort of openness in my heart to the movement of the Spirit, to acting on God's will. And, and all that makes sense because Mary's one job is to point us to her son, yeah. and she does it so perfectly. I, I have found, and, I, and you know, I love reading the lives of the saints, and, and even the saints that I, I don't have really anything in common with, I exactly. learned so much. Like that. Yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> most of them. I learned so much about God. I learned so much about our church and just the way they lived. You know, everything yes. I learned when it came to catechesis for the first, I'd say, two or three years of my life was not from, you know, a, a how-to book or a, the compendium of the Catholic Church. It was all through the lives of the saints for me. They really kind of showed that gospel alive mm-hmm. and living and Man, that that's heart. That's not just mind. That's heart right there, and that's why I love the saints. They show me the heart of faith. They show, they, that's a great that's a great way to put it, John. They show you the heart, and at the heart of of what we're talking about here is that personal encounter with Jesus. Yeah. You know, I was just I was just in Richmond, Virginia, at a lay ecclesial ministry conference, and I was giving some talks last weekend, and um, there I was talking about you know what we really want for our children, what we want for ourselves is that personal encounter with Jesus, because no matter how much science evolves or understands the universe, no matter how much politics divides us, nobody can take away those personal encounters that you've had. You know that you've met the risen Lord. It's like in all those resurrection appearances in the Easter season. These these disciples know, it's confirmed, they've met Jesus mm. and after, after being raised from the dead, and their lives are never the same. And... It's like the treasure hidden in the field that the, the, the farmer sells everything to buy that land. It, that The treasure is the encounter. It's the precious pearl. And so, like the saints, they've all at some point had one and maybe multiple and maybe just living in this kind of stream of encountering God in a personal way. And that's what we want. And, and then we, when we see, hey, somebody else has had that and it's changed their life in dramatic and, and really positive ways, we want that too. Um, you know, I think it's the most attractive thing about Christianity should be that, you know, the joy that comes from following God and the joy that just imbues an, ent- an entire person's life. I mean, when you meet a Christian who's on fire, you know this really well. Uh, it's contagious. It's attractive. Uh, you want it. And and that's what the saints had. Now, some of them were curmudgeons, like you got Jerome who yeah. wanted to go live in a cave and, and nobody, you know, him and the letters between him and St. Augustine are just ridiculous in terms of, you talk about sourpusses, man. Uh, he was the king. But to your point, like this is, the saints lived that relationship with God and we saw the effects of that lived relationship and it makes us hungry for it. Yeah, I think so, man. I really do. Is there a saint that you'd recommend people to start with? Maybe read their lives oh, first? Oh my goodness. I, I got one. I, I, you should know who that's who I'm going to say. Who am I going to Therese of Lisieux. Therese of Lisieux, yep. who uh, you've gone on your own journey know. with her. I know. Yeah. I'm still But I'll going tell you what. Journey. I'll say one thing about Therese. I'll yeah. give you three. Okay. Therese, Augustine, and St. Francis. And I'll give you three real quick reasons. For Therese, um, Therese for me really embodies someone who personalizes the call to follow Jesus because she has such a hard time figuring out what she's supposed to do. And even as a nun, which you figure, well, she's already on her vocation journey, so what's the big puzzle? Well, she's trying to figure out as a nun, as a Carmelite, what in what ways am I supposed to serve God? In other words, she starts thinking about what are my gifts? And she starts reading St. Paul and, and Corinthians, and, well, some are evangelists, some are teachers, some are this and that. She's like, I'm none of these things. Mm. So what am I supposed to do? And what she lands on is that as long as I try to love God the best way I know how, 
uh, which is in small ways, small gestures of love and sacrifice, then I'm on the right track. Yeah. So I think she is such a wonderful embodiment of like learning what your gifts are uh, and following God in a way that you are uniquely called to. Mm. Why, like Francis, why Augustine? Oh, Francis, okay. No, go ahead, go ahead. Well, why, I was going to say, why Augustine? I was going to get to him, too. Okay. For Augustine, I think just the – Augustine really shows us the um, – the desires to, to pay attention to your deepest desires. Um, Augustine's deepest desires in his early life were sort of, you know, fractured and skewed. Uh, he was very a very lustful man and so forth, but I'm going to borrow a, a quote that's attributed to G.K. Chesterton often, which is, a man who knocks on the door of a brothel is really looking for God. Wow. So even though the desire is skewed and, he, and he's, he's seeing love in a lusty way, at the bottom of that desire is the human need and desire for God and for love. Mm. And Augustine, Augustine, he experienced those deep desires being transformed by the grace of God and the wisdom of the gospel. And he, he remained a desirous man all through his life, but it was transformed to a, a perfected love of God versus this lusty love of women. But the whole point for me with Augustine is pay attention to what those deep desires are and offer those to God. Because if they're not right, if you will, or they're not righteous, just bring those desires to God, and he can change those. He can mm. redirect those. And then finally with Francis, just the radicality of following the gospel, yeah. the, the reckless abandon with which he gave himself to the Word of God. And I love the, when he goes to Pope Innocent III, because he needs permission to found his order of the, of the brothers minor, the little brothers. Mm -hmm. uh, and he says, well, you got to have a rule. And he says, well, what other rule is there mm. besides the gospel? You know, I mean, it's right. just that kind of, that kind of, again, just we all want that. There, there's an adventurousness there. There's a trust there it's, and it, it's just we need that we need these kinds of people in our inner society today and all three of them grew up in very difficult climates difficult cultural and political situations and we can talk more about that some other time but the fact that these men and women existed and did what they did as saints gives us a cause for hope today hey, hey plug your book your latest. Oh, so my book from last year, yeah. Uh, they saw through God's eyes an invitation from Mary and the Saints, published through Word Among Us a year ago. Um, gives you 12 accounts, 12 different saintly stories that are paired with 12 stories of just contemporary folks that I know. And in each case, uh, a saint and this contemporary person, have has uh, their faith has helped them see something different about their life, and that difference has changed everything about them. So highly recommend that book. It's full of prayers and reflection questions, and it's an easy read. Yeah, where can people get it? They can get it at Word Among Us. They can get it at Divine Treasures. They can get it at Amazon. Yes, they can. Deacon Matt Hallback, everyone, on the Saints Matter, and put this one in your podcast, friends, and listen to it again. I think it's a good one. Deacon, God bless you, man. Thank you for coming on. All right. All right. No problem, John. Take care. Listen to the Catholic Morning Show weekday mornings at 7 on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network, iowacatholicradio.com, or the Iowa Catholic Radio app.